Hi folks, thank you for joining my demo at Black Hat Arsenal and today we will speak about DNS security and my open source tool IOC to RPZ. And I want to start with a short introduction. My name is Vadim Pavlov, I am a product manager at Infoblox. Last eight years I'm working with DNS and DNS security and created a few tools and DNS servers. Three years ago, I started working on IOC to RPZ project, which I am pleased to present you today. So, why I am speaking about DNS at Black Hat? DNS is a control plane of the internet, and it decides to which service you will connect. For example, a single typo can send you to a phishing lookalike website. Malware use DNS for command and control, data exfiltration, phishing. DDoS attacks and attacks on the DNS protocol itself. So, what will be the best place to protect your network against these threats? Ten years ago, Paul Wixie and Werner Schreiber came up with a brilliant idea that DNS itself should protect your network. Response policy zones were introduced on BIND. They act as a DNS firewall and block connections to malicious domains or IP addresses. As you see on this slide, many DNS servers support RPZ. IOC to RPZ is a service which links your threat intelligence with your DNS service. It pulls the indicators from your tip or threat intel provider or from local files or local databases, convert them and maintain as RPZ feeds which can be used on any DNS server which supports RPZ. To simplify management, I've created IOC to RPZ GUI. IOC to RPZ.dc contains a Docker Compose file, which significantly simplify deployments. RPI DNS is a management interface for a small home or home office DNS servers. IOC to RPZ community is powered by IOC to RPZ and provides free of charge RPZ feeds. These RPZ feeds are based on OS Int and you can try the technology without installing the software. How it works? IOC to RPZ pulls threat intelligence from TIP or threat intelligence provider and generate RPZ feeds. These RPZ feeds are distributed to your DNS servers. Every time a client makes a DNS request, this request is analyzed by DNS firewall on your DNS server. And if there is a match, this request can be blocked or a client can be redirected to a valid garden page. Even if a client is infected, it cannot communicate with CNC and it is protected. Afterwards, you can investigate this incidents in SIM. You use DNS in your organization and you can convert it to a security layer, which is agentless and it can protect all your users and all your devices, including IoT. In comparing with NG firewalls and SVG, DNS is cheap and can handle millions of rules. And you can enforce security on all your traffic, even in service provider networks. Cloud-only services cannot provide you a protection in air gap networks best latency and geo-based responses. If you go with on-prem DNS security, IOC to RPZ provides you full flexibility and control what to apply and how to apply security policies. Let's proceed to the demo. I will show you how to install the service, how to configure RPZ feeds, your DNS servers, and we'll do a short demo of RPI DNS. The easiest way to deploy IC to RPZ is by using IC to RPZ Docker Compose file, which is located in .dc repository. You can clone it or just copy it. Depending on available resources and internet connection, the installation can take about three minutes. IC to RPZ GUI installation script will create a sample configuration with two RPZ feeds. The RPZ feeds will be immediately available when configuration is saved and service starts. Let's connect to the web interface. 
when you connect for the first time, you have to create an administrator. SSL certificate for the services was generated locally. This is why you saw the SSL error. After the first login, I recommend you to change the external IP of the server. So in this case, a sample configuration generated by the portal will be correct. When you change configuration in the GUI, don't forget to publish the updates to the IOC to RPZ service. Let's take a look on the pre-configured RPZ feeds. RPZ feeds can be provisioned on multiple IOC to RPZ servers and can be uh, accessed by multiple TC keys. Only the first server and the first TC key are provided in the provisioning info. To check a zone availability, I recommend you to start with a SO request and after that to make a zone transfer using IXFR request. IC to RPZ service log will contain information about all DNS requests in a C format. To create an RPZ zone, you need to create one or more sources. A source can be a local file, remote file or API request or a script. For every source, you can define how to get incremental updates and how to extract indicators and an expiration date. Let's take a look how to create a source from a local file. Because we deployed IOC to RPZ as a container, we have to move the local file into the connected volume. My sample file contains only indicators. In this case, we don't need uh, to use any regex to extract them. File with a colon is a prefix which you have to use when you specify a source from a local file. Next, let's take a look how to create a source from a tip or threat intelligence provider where you can use a REST API and you can set all the parameters including credentials or a token in the URL string. I've copied the export URL and remove it the limit from the URL. Because when you do security, you should understand which records are included or excluded. This tip supports incremental updates. This is why I'm filling the incremental update field. Rejects is not required. In some cases, it's not enough just to pull a local file or external URL. You may need to provide additional authentication information or you may need to access a local database. In this case, IOC to RPZ provides you an ability to execute a shell script. In this example, square brackets are used, which are hard to remove using just a simple rejects. To create a source which will execute CLA command or script, you should use keyword shell with a colon as a prefix. A script or a tool can save its state in a configuration volume, so in this case you can support incremental updates. We created the sources and right now we can go and create the RPZ feeds. First of all we have to define a name, we have to define on which servers it will be generated, which TC key or TC key groups will have an access to it, and also from which sources it is created. The other settings include rule action, IP to notify if a zone updates, source type, if a zone should be cached or generated on a fly, generating wildcard tools, so timers and full zone update time and incremental zone update time. Don't forget to publish updated configuration. In the service logs, you can find information if a source is available, how many indicators were extracted from a source, and how many rules were generated for a zone. The log file will also contain any errors which may occur while generating the RPZ feed. You saw that the zones were successfully created and we can go and validate them using a dig tool. A dig tool is shipped with bind and if a dig 
can pull the zone, this means that pine can pull the zone. As you see, the RPZ zones were successfully transferred and it took less than 10 minutes for me to install IC to RPZ and provision three additional RPZ zones. The fully provisioned IC to RPZ and the last thing you have to do is configure your DNS servers to use the new RPZ feeds. On the web interface you can find tools to generate a configuration for IC bind, power DNS and info blocks. You need to merge the provided configuration with the configuration of your DNS server. When you export a configuration, you may select all RPZ feeds or RPZ feeds you are interested in. Don't forget that the export tool will use only the first IC to RPZ service and the first TC key assigned to the RPZ feed. You may adjust the configuration if needed. To get a configuration for Infoblox, you have to provide a member name and a view name. In this case, a CSV file will be created and you can use it to import the configuration to Infoblox grid. The CSV import file maintains the recommended feed order. So when you import it, you will see the zones with the FQDNs only first, after that mixed zones and the last you will see all the zones based on the IP subnets or IP addresses. Servers and TC key were successfully imported. For home, home office or even small office, you can use RPI DNS. What is RPI DNS? It is actually an installation script which is uh, generated by IC to RPZ GUI plus a web interface. The installation script will install bind, will provision open REST as a web service and install a syslog uh, service. You can run RPI DNS on even smallest Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi Zero with a half gig of RAM can handle up to million RPZ rules with a decent QPS. For example, at home, I'm using Raspberry Pi 4 with uh, 4 gigs of RAM as a primary DNS server, which has all the DNS feeds from community website, about 2 million records. And as a secondary, I'm using Raspberry Pi 0 with about 700,000 rows. The only prerequisite for RPI DNS is freshly flashed Raspberry Pi uh, Linux on Raspberry Pi. When the installation is done, don't forget to write down the credentials because the credentials generated randomly after the each install. And if you lost them, you will need to update the configuration files manually. To access the web interface through a host name, you have to update your DNS server settings. You can do it on your laptop or on your router. Open REST generates certificates on the fly and to avoid these SSL errors, you have to install a private CA authority certificate, which is available through a web interface. RPI DNS uh, web interface is an open source project and you may use it with your bind instances. RPI DNS uses syslog to collect the logs and it uh, updates the statistics every minute. So if you had a hit or if you want to take a look on all the requests, you may need to wait up to one minute. If you configure your RPI DNS with a redirect to action, by default, it will redirect a user to the same RPI DNS instance. As I mentioned before, OpenRest will generate certificates on the fly. And if you want to avoid SSL errors when a block page is displayed, you have to install a CA root certificate. And if you are doing that, don't forget to secure your appliance. This is all for the demo today. And as a short summary, I want to remind you that all devices use DNS. You use DNS in your organization and malware use DNS. Make DNS your security layer. 
IC to RPG can help you to make it faster and easier. If you have any questions, comments, want to provide any feedback, you can contact me through Telegram channel, email or through uh, issues on GitHub. Thank you for watching and have a good rest of your day.